Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an introduction to Malware Analysis. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at what Malware is exactly, uh, the types of Malware that exist, uh, what Malware Analysis is, and the objectives of Malware Analysis. We'll then talk about the types of Malware Analysis that exist and what they all entail. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, what exactly is Malware? That you know, that should be the main question in your head if you don't know what it is exactly. So malware is an executable or a binary that is malicious in nature. All right. So malware is used by attackers to perform a variety of malicious actions like one, for example, uh, could be spying on a target uh, through the use of a remote access tool or a keylogger. Right. Uh, secondly, they could be performing data exfiltration and or destruction of data. So they could be stealing data from uh, from the target uh, or they could be destroying data. Right. And uh, one of the most popular ones right now, examples of this is uh, the data encryption and destruction. And this is done through ransomware. So, so again, uh, the whole uh, idea of financial gain uh, from the from pieces of malware like ransomware is becoming very, very popular. And again, this, the, the course is, is going to tackle various pieces of malware as well. So it'll be really exciting to take a look at that and sort of reverse engineer various pieces of ransomware. All right. So uh, that is, in essence, what malware is. Now, let's talk about the types of malware, because remember, malware is a very wide or broad subject uh, to, to sort of describe in, in, in one paragraph. And we need to understand that it, uh, the various pieces of uh, malware or the various types of malware are sorted out further into the in, in regards to their functionality so uh, malware refers to any binary or executable that is malicious that has been established uh, secondly uh, malware is sorted into further denominations based on its or their functionality so here are the various types of malware sorted out in terms of their functionality and what they do all right now the mind you these are very very basic or, or very minimal examples of the various types of malware that exist i'm simply uh listing the most popular ones and the best examples of uh, their functionality and how they differ in terms of their functionality but one thing they share in common is they all intend to do uh, something malicious to the target right or they all have malicious intent now that that may not be entirely true for uh, remote access tools but again they have to be considered a piece of malware because they can be used for illegal as well as legal uh, deployments. So uh, number one is are Trojans, right? So Trojans are a type of malware that disguise itself or they disguise themselves as legitimate programs for the purpose of social engineering. So you're trying to get a user to click on a program and you've disguised it as a legitimate program, right? So uh, it's very, very similar to binding a payload to an existing uh, EXE file, for example, the Chrome setup, and then, you know, exploiting the system through the use of that. So you've essentially performed a, a type of uh, social engineering. So uh, the functionality of a Trojan is limited to the fact that it can destroy and exfiltrate data from a system. However, we have seen uh, different variants where they can also be used for spying. Um, secondly, we have remote access tools. And again, uh, I'm, I'm going to mention the fact that remote access tools uh, are used for both legal and illegal intent, and that should be taken into consideration. So they're a type of malware that allows an, the attacker to remotely access and execute commands on the system. Now, uh, you, if you've taken a look at the various remote access tools out there, uh, you can see that they, uh, they vary in terms of functionality. You know, uh, a remote access tool in, is considered the best uh, because it offers you more functionality. I recently reviewed the Remcos right on my channel and you could see the various amounts of functionality. Yeah, so functionality can be stripped or extended uh, with the use of uh, f other pieces of malware or modules as they're called, like key loggers. All right, so remote access tools are extremely complex and we'll be taking a look at some of the basic ones because uh, performing uh, analysis on them uh, it really takes a while because again, as I said, they have a ton of features. Uh, we then move on to ransomware, which again, I've mentioned is becoming uh, extremely popular now and we'll be taking a look at decrypting and analyzing some of the, uh, the, the various strains of ransomware out there. So again, this is a type of malware that en that encrypts all the files on the system and holds the system and its data for ransom. So again, it uh, essentially encrypts all the files on a system and then you have to pay a ransom to decrypt those files. Um, 
We then have a dropper. Now, a dropper, may not, you may not be familiar with what a dropper is, but uh, quite simply, it is a type of malware whose purpose is to download or to drop additional malware onto the system. Now, it may not have any malicious intent apart from the fact that it downloads the actual malware. And uh, these are usually used to avoid initial detection or, you know, so, so the user uh, isn't suspicious of what's going on. So it may be also uh, binded as a legitimate program that then downloads the malware uh, or drops the malware onto your system. So again, very, very dangerous stuff there. And we'll be taking a look at various droppers as well. All right, so those are the most popular types of malware that exist. And so, uh, the, the, these are all the classifications in regards to what we are going to be focusing on. Now, I know that these are just a very small example of the pieces of malware. But again, as I said, uh, this is what we're going to be focusing on. So let's take a look at what exactly malware analysis is, right? So what, mal what is malware analysis, right? So malware analysis is the process of analyzing a malware sample or a binary and extracting as much information as possible from it, all right? The information that we extract is that will then help us to understand the scope of the functionality of the malware, which means what exactly this malware does or what can it do, right? Uh, how the system was infected. So we're trying to find out, okay, uh, how did this piece of malware get onto the system so that we can prevent it from happening uh, again, right? So we can defend against similar attacks in the future, which then brings up the question, what are the clear-cut objectives of performing malware analysis for a company uh, and for yourself, really? Or, uh, you know, uh, really for, for a company, because companies are the most uh, targeted uh, organizations or uh, groups of people, rather, that are uh, really, really the target now for attackers. So the objectives of malware analysis... Number one, to understand the type of malware and the entire scope of what it can do. So they're trying to understand, all right, is this a remote access tool? Is this a Trojan? And what can it do? What really can this malware do? You know, they try and understand everything it can do, right? So they're trying to see, is it a keylogger? Okay, does it have extended functionality? Does it also have a dropper? So that's uh, the, the first objective. The second objective is to find out how the system was infected. Right. So you're trying to understand, is this a targeted attack or was it a phishing attack so that you can prevent this from happening again? Right. So you're building up your dip, uh, your your defense in depth. Right. Uh, uh, thirdly, it's um, we are trying to find out how uh, the malware communicates with the attacker. For example, if it is a remote access tool. We are trying to see, all right, is it connecting back to a command and control center? Is it command, uh, connecting back to a, a web server? What exactly is it doing in regards to communicating with the attacker? So we're trying to understand that. So again, we can understand uh, the infrastructure here. And lastly, and most importantly, is to exfiltrate useful indicators like registry entries or keys uh, and, the, and the file names or new file names for the purpose of generating signatures that can be then used for, uh, for future detections. So this is what antivirus companies do. Uh, in regards to uh, the various pieces of malware, they uh, essentially analyze them, uh, exfiltrate useful indicators like uh, the new registries that have been entered or modified, and the, the file names that, uh, that the malware creates. And with that, they generate signatures that are then used to, uh, to detect any future infections. So that is what, uh, in essence, uh, antivirus companies do. Um, now, let's take a look at the types of malware analysis that we'll be taking a look at in this course, right? So, first of all, we have static analysis, we then have dynamic analysis, we then have code analysis and behavioral analysis. So, let's start off with static analysis. So, static analysis is the process of analyzing malware without executing or running it. That's very important here. And again, the word or the, the name gives it away. It's static. We're not executing it. We are simply just trying to uh, extract information uh, uh, in information from the from, from, from the malware sample. So the objective is to extract as much meta, metadata from the malware as possible. Now the metadata I'm referring to are things like strings or PE headers. Now if you're not familiar with those terms, don't worry, we'll be covering that all when we take a look at static analysis in depth. Uh, we then have dynamic analysis. Again, the name might give you an idea of what's going on in this stage. So it is the process of executing the malware and analyzing its functionality and behavior. Now, behavior will be taking will, we, we will be taking a look at its behavior in depth when we talk about behavioral analysis. But 
uh, again, we had, we had the objective in dynamic analysis is to understand exactly how and what the malware does during the execution. And this is mostly monitored in, uh, in a debugger. And again, I'll explain how it differs, you know, from dynamic analysis to behavioral analysis, because you can handle it differently depending on, on how you like it. But I, I like going at it, you know, step by step. We then have code analysis. Now, code analysis is something very important because, again, it involves the process of uh, analyzing or reverse engineering assembly code. And again, this can be done both statically and dynamically because uh, you can do this executable has not been executed or you can do this uh, dynamically while you, or you're executing the program. This is done to, to, to essentially understand what piece of code does what. All right. So you're trying to see, OK, uh, during this section here, what is the malware doing? And through that, you get an understanding of the malware's functionality. Uh, and finally, you have one of my favorite aspects, which is the behavioral analysis, right? So this is the process of analyzing and monitoring the malware after execution or right from the point of execution onwards. So it involves monitoring the processes, the registry entries and monitoring the network to determine the workings of the malware. So the objective here is to understand, OK, from the point of execution, what is this malware doing? Uh, it, is it creating any new files? Is it creating any new registries? Is it editing any new registries? Is it sending data back to the attacker or is it sending any information stuff back, uh, back to the attacker? And of course, we will we'll be doing all of this using various tools. And of course, you're looking at things like whether or not it's injecting itself into another process. What process is it? Uh, is it trying to connect to a particular website? Is it... Um, uh, has it made any changes to the registry? And of course, we'll be doing this using tools like Wireshark to, to, to monitor network traffic. Uh, we'll be using FakeNet to essentially create or simulate uh, an internet connection to see what DNS requests and what websites it's trying to access and whether or not it's downloading additional inf uh, malware onto the system. So a lot of stuff goes on in, be in behavioral analysis. Uh, but again, we'll be taking a look at, at that when we get to it. So um, that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully it was a good enough introduction to malware analysis. Uh, the slides uh, used in these videos will be available in the description section because they are very helpful if you want to go through them again or you want to keep them for reference purposes. And yeah, so we've taken a look at a lot. We've taken a look at what exactly malware is, the types of malware that exist, um, the malware analysis process and the objectives of malware analysis, and finally, the types of malware analysis. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at setting up our environment, the various tools we'll be using, and how to automate the entire process. All right, so I'll be seeing you in the next video.